Welcome to Beyond the Lab, a series by the Office of Career Development within the Biomedical Research Education and Training Department of the Vanderbilt University School of Medicine. My name is Kate Stewart, and I'm here today with Dr. Pollyanna Jones. We're so glad to have you back. And Dr. Jones, you were a postdoc alumni with Dr. Khan's lab, so we're glad to have you. Will you tell us about your time that when you were here at Vanderbilt? Um, well, I was here from February 2007 until April 2009, so it was a little over two years. And during that time, I did research looking using electrophysiology and looking at um, allosteric modulators and recording from different regions of the brain using electrophysiology. So it was very exciting. It was an exciting time. Okay, so what did you do after your postdoc? So after my postdoc, I thought initially I would go into industry, but after thinking about what I wanted in terms of family time and my personal um, life, I chose to do the academy or academic work. So I went to Mercy College and I was lucky to get a tenure track position there. Okay. So what, what happened after Mercy? Uh, after Mercy, I was there two years. The first year, you're just kind of getting your feet wet as a new professor. And then after that, um, I actually got pregnant with my first child. And during that maternity leave time, I started thinking about some other options just because I wanted more time with him during the summer. And I realized I didn't want to do research in the summer. And that wasn't my priority. So I felt like the tenure track position, even though I was willing to work for that, wasn't what I, I wanted in the end. So I started looking at teaching at private high schools in the New York City area. Okay, and so what do you do now? So now I'm a upper school chemistry teacher at the Ethical Culture Fieldston School, and that's located in the Bronx, which okay. is, it's almost close to Yonkers. So it's a, a very, it actually looks more like a suburban area than what you would think of as, as typical New York City. And um, I've been teaching there now, this is my sixth year. Okay, so you must like it so far. How does this job appeal to your skill set? Um, I think the number one skill set that you learn getting your uh, doctorate and then doing postdoctoral training work is just a, a larger understanding of science in a more interdisciplinary way. So for me, a lot of the time when I, a lot of times when I'm teaching chemistry, I have to talk about real life applications and I have to pull in different disciplines. And that the, that's the thing that I think the PhD, gave me just the experience and the breadth and the depth of knowledge to be able to think and speak on your feet when the students are asking you questions about things that maybe you wouldn't have that experience if you had a, um, a master's in education or a doctorate in education. Having done the science, it's nice to be able to explain that to young people. So um, I think the PhD gives you just the knowledge base and also the time management skills, the autonomy to work on your own, to be creative, to divide, de define questions and ways to um, answer those questions. All those things come up in, okay. in teaching. So tell me what you do all day. Like if there's a pie chart of what you do all day, what are some of the percentages of how you spend your time? Right, um, I would say a large percentage of your percentage of your time. So 38% to 40% is spent teaching, actually in the classroom with the students, in front of the board, in front of the lab bench, working with them, doing experiments and explaining science. So that's the exciting work that you do every day. And then the other, about 22% of the time, you will spend meeting students outside of class. So the way our school is designed is that you teach, at least in science, three sections. Uh, if, it's, if it's outside of science, it's more like four sections. But you have a lot of time where you can meet students outside of the class, uh, the classroom and outside of class time. So that's 22% of the time. And then the rest of the time is spent doing advising, contacting parents, and also meetings and different things that the school does in terms of community work. So I would say the, the bulk of it is the teaching and engaging with students. And that's the work that's kind of pushes you and fulfills you. So... Your first year in Mercy, maybe your first year at Fieldston, what's that like? I mean, it's the, the transition, the challenge of, of being a teacher. You know, what were some of the, the most challenging things for you? Well, at Mercy, the biggest challenge was preparing such long lectures, um, particularly in the general chemistry class. It was a almost three hour 
class. So that's a long time to spend with your students and you really have to find neat ways to break it up. So I did a lot of clickers and automatic response and different things like that. And then I spent a bulk of my time just preparing those lessons outside of work time. At the high school level, I had kind of a basis of material that I could use more so for the advanced chemistry class. So with the high school um, first year, I think it was getting used to the students and the way that they process science and where they are in their learning. So getting an idea of what they know and then where to start in teaching a new topic. And then also Fieldston's a very big school. Um, we have a large curriculum and a large student body. So just understanding the culture and what I should be doing, what things I shouldn't be doing as a first year teacher. So a lot of just acclimating to being a high school teacher. And, and learning from the students almost. And so you love it. You must enjoy it very much. If you're sticking with it, what are some of the, the challenges that you've, you've found? Um, I think for me, the biggest challenge was learning how to answer questions from a teenage student at that age. You know, understanding their questions, where they were coming from and really how to answer their question and get to the meat of what they were trying to say. Sometimes it's difficult to understand what they're really asking you or where they're struggling with the material. And then also another area related to that is what types of questions to ask because we try not to just tell them a concept. We have them arrive at a, at a definition or a concept or an idea rather than here it is, kind of the old method of open up your brain and fill up all the material. So we have them arrive and do a lot of hands-on work. So developing all of that. Okay. So if a trainee is interested in teaching, mm -hmm. you know, either on a, a smaller liberal arts scale or in a high school, what, what would you recommend they do when they're training here at Vanderbilt? Um, at the graduate level, I would recommend getting involved in like the Center for Teaching or figuring out if there are opportunities to volunteer to teach or tutor. And also, if you're a grad student, getting opportunities to be a TA, a teaching assistant, that gives you an idea of what, it, what it's like to kind of have your own section. And then towards the end of grad school, I think you can do more tutoring and you can also look for teaching jobs at like the Nashville State Community College. That's what I did. Or as a postdoc, you can also do some of those things as well. And just, you know, if you're really interested in it, find out what networks are around you and other people who may have done it in the, in the past that have been here. Okay, so will you tell me about your work-life balance? Okay, uh, for me, I, I would say there are times of the year where you might be doing more work at home. So if you give a lab report or during home report writing time, that's something kind of unique to private schools where you write like a paragraph about how the student is doing at the mid-semester um, break or period or quarter. And so during that time, you're writing 45 of these evaluations and there's no way you can get all of it done at, at work. So most teachers just take that weekend. I have devised a plan where I do like six leading up to the due date because I don't have the luxury of taking a weekend to write them. My kids are way too young for that, you know. As they get older, I can do a, a more at home that weekend leading up. So my work-life balance can be really great at periods during the year. Like I can be all weekend with the kids. And then there's other periods where there's heavy work that needs to be done, like the home report writing. Um, so just if it's that job, it's it's that. A lot of private school teachers also tutor in New York City. So that can take away from maybe evenings. But if you work it out the correct way, you kind of do it right after school. And then you can still get home, get your kids and have that time as well. So. Okay. So if you had some words of wisdom for current trainees about the job search and, and their career development, what, what, what would be the words of wisdom you would give? I would say sit down and think of things that you enjoy. Usually people end up doing things that they've always liked since they were really young. You know, as a, as a child, um, people who end up being teachers are people who would generally teach and play teaching as a child. So sit down and think about the things you enjoy, what you've enjoyed doing in grad school. What is it you like about science? Um, for a while, I thought I would do 
the business side of science um, when I was in grad, um, in undergrad. So understanding what you like, figuring out what you want to do, and then finding out ways to get into that, that career path. That's great. Thank you so much for coming. We enjoyed having you. Of course. It's great. Thank you.